Now this main poodle is actually we can call it cream or fawn in color because it's not really all fawn, it's not really all white. So now it comes here for neutering because it has been marking for two weeks, right? And it's eight months old. Now the best time to neuter is as early as possible because they have not developed the habit of marking uh, during marking. Now uh, six to eight months. Uh, now, so for a general examination, check the fifth, uh, the, the mouth first. Come, wait, let the owner hold your hold, etc. Sometimes they are quite nervous. No, okay, check the mouth to show to see that. Hello, why now you are so scared? That's not it's okay. It's okay, it's okay. Okay, let's see, see, see. Now, so this is the the gum color is good. So for operation, uh, the surgery, you don't buy right, should take a blood test. But anyway. We, we see this, this part. Okay, come relax. Thank you, thank you. Now, the thing about 8 months old is the retained teeth. Huh? So you can see that this one here. Okay, when, when it's happening, what's happening? It was okay just now. Hmm. Well, you just see here, come. Now, it doesn't like people to wear its mouth for some reason. Now, maybe it's pain, painful, but the retained teeth. Huh? Okay, anyway, I just have a quick look. Just have, no, you have, you have hold him, you have hold. Just a quick look, just talk to him. Huh? There, there, there. Okay, there is the retained, uh, there, retained canine teeth, uh, tooth, upper one, left and right. So, and there's a small uh, inside cells that didn't drop off. Uh, there, you can see here, it didn't drop off. So, I will just take it out. So, below is okay, there, drop off already. There's no puppy canine teeth, uh, the fangs, there's no. So, this one thing the vet must check during uh, neutering of a young. A milk puppy. Okay, now we turn over. Come, hold down a bit. Huh? Now, now put down first. Now this is a very rare case of bilateral undescended testicle. Bilateral means two-sided. Now actually, this dog doesn't have a scrotum, which is quite rare. Now, the only good news for the owner is that the the testicles are actually under the skin here. There, right? there's one here, and there's one here. So, the, yeah, don't have to open up. Okay, relax us. Okay. Now, many many vets, I don't say young vets or old vets, they find that uh, if they can't find a testicle here under the skin, they will just uh, neuter the, the dog wherever they can see a descended testicle. But the proper way is if there is no a descended testicle felt under the skin, because sometimes they are deep in the inside the inguinal canal, when the dog is upside down, the testicle goes in. So, so in that case, if it's too in, then you got to let the owner know first. So you do an op operation, open up like that, like in a bladder operation. You open up and it, you go inside, you will see a small testicle near the bladder. So uh, some vets, they just neuter the dog half, I call it half neuter because the one inside the abdomen, they don't do it. And then, uh, and then the dog is not really neutered. So the one inside will become cancerous later in life, in many cases. So for the younger vet, my advice is, you need to let the owner know first, and then you cut like this, and it open up. Then you will see a small testicle inside, near the bladder, the neck of the bladder. Now, if you don't want to do it, then uh, refer to other vets to do it. But never issue a certificate of neuter when you don't really neuter 100%. That means sometimes there's a descendant one, you just neuter that one, and then you can find, find here, now in this dog, it's quite difficult to find also because it's not really 100% out. It is, when, it, when it's upside down for neutering, it is really quite uh, deep in. So, so, uh, so there's a problem sometimes when you, when you anesthetize the dog, the thing, the testicle disappeared inside. Okay. So in this case, I, I need to let owner know if I can't find, if I can't find it here, I, then I need to open up and go in and get both testicles out. Otherwise, uh, we, we must let the owner know early. Otherwise, in the middle of operation, you find one that you can't find anything. Uh, then you panic and then you say, Oh, I, I, I cannot find. Then the other possibility, if you cannot find, then put the dog straight like this. Put back the dog standing after the dog is anesthetized. And then you feel it. You see whether you can feel it or not. Because it might come down or it might not. You come down then you can, you can catch it. But uh, now this dog is 
is a bit more in than the other dog. So if you hold, if you feel like this, if you can't feel it, then the, there's no point you spending time trying to look for it because it's gone into the inguinal ring or it hasn't come out fully. It hasn't come out fully. So uh, it's painful. It's, it's very deep inside the inguinal ring. So in this case, rather than uh, rather than uh, cutting a big hole and look for it, which 99% you can't find it, then let the owner know, get his permission, and then uh, open up there and go inside and take it out from the abdomen so that the dog won't get cancer of the testicle when he's 10 years old because the vet didn't uh, remove it, especially when there's one descended and one not descended, one abdominal one. So these are the, the the tips for crypto kit. Okay, finish the testicle. Uh, you need to make reflect the penis after skin insertion. Reflect the penis, and then you make like linear alba, cut the linear alba. And uh, in this case, I managed to hook up hook up the abdominal testicle. And this is the left side. Then uh, once you hook up, it's easy. Then you just. Uh, because you just uh, clamp and remove it. I take a picture so click uh, focus. Come to my side better. My side here. Yeah. My side here. This side me. Now you can see from here. You can see from here. This is the, the one I hook up. Click, click the picture. Click from there. Focus and click. Frustration a few times, I'll click a few times. I mean, click, click, click here, I mean, from this side. The angle is due here, yeah. Okay. Can I finish it? This is the abdominal crypto kit. Yeah. Then uh, I just picture, okay, finish it back to the abdominal testicle taken out. Take a picture also, and uh, so similar with the normal uterine and uh, even develop testicular cancer because many of these retained testicles in the abdomen become cancerous during the old age of the dog, maybe 10 years old. But now we have removed two and show to the owner. I will, I will leave it and show to the owner and so that uh, there is no uh, dispute as to whether they have been removed. After removal of the two, two abdominal testicles, I use a spay hook because I don't want to have such a large incision. Normally you have to cut further down if you want to see the, the retained testicle. So I use a hook and hook up the two the two testicles. Now I'm suturing the linear alba. You can see the bladder is there. Bladder and rectum. Uh, I can show you that. This is the rectum actually. Rectum. And the uh, bladder will be around that area as well. So I'm using the hook to hook up the, the two testicles and I, I have removed them already so now I'm suturing the linear alba this is a linear alba after reflecting the penis to the side because otherwise the penis will be blocking blocking the way and uh, about three sutures simple interrupter sutures will do and uh, and then after that of course the skin and uh, they sit here yeah. This absorber two zeros I'm using. This is a linear alpha. This is a circuiting effect. And uh, this is the uh, important part is the linear alpha because if you don't do properly you get hernia. And here there, there is a big problem. Okay, only I do five knots. Yeah. Okay, okay, it's September 26, 2016, Monday. Now this educational video is to demonstrate that uh, the owner must be informed about uh, abdominal retained testicle. Otherwise, when you do it and you can't find it under the skin, then uh, especially when you have two and you didn't inform the owner beforehand, then the owner will be very unhappy because you make you make two cuts subcutaneous, but they can't find the can't find the testicle because they are inside the abdomen. Okay, then the other thing is, try and 
have a good checkup and and then you may discover some retained canine teeth as in this dog. So the advice the owner to remove it because retained canine teeth will cause entrapment of the hairs and the foot and cause the bad breath as well and also prevent the development of the permanent canine because it obstructs the, the canine so even though the owner says I want to do castration so have a general checkup especially the mouth now this 8 month old poodle just does the urine marking just 2 weeks ago so the owner decides to to uh, go for neutering actually this is a bilateral crypto kit abdominal we take a plaster and cover up this uh, we take the plaster and cover I just show the owner that to prove that two testicles have been taken out these are the, these are the teeth the three teeth and we, okay a bit okay you know, I just cover up for protection of, there'll be a lot of, there'll be a bleeding from the subcutaneous fats yeah now we put another one in then uh, oh the fellow pee already so that was really surprising yeah anyway we just uh, have to yeah, clean up afterwards yeah. now the dog is on IV IV is uh, important normally we, I, I do intubation anesthetic and uh, I give dormitory plus ketamine first 50% of the calculated weight intubate and and give uh, IV IV uh, Drip from which I give tofudin and betril post op, it should be okay. So that's it. So this is the end of surgery and extraction of the teeth. There was a, a small, small uh, retained uh, corner, upper corner, right corner incisor teeth. So that's why you can see three the right up, upper right and left uh, puppy teeth also the canine and one uh, left upper incisor also puppy that is uh, left upper eye tree the other one the other two are, are the upper canine the deciduous this is the permanent one you can see the permanent one is quite big quite strong but it was blocked by the retained uh, the canine so in other words when you do neutering for your young dog you have to check the mouth as well and other things but now this is a very unusual case of bilateral bilateral abdominal cryptokidnia and as you can see there's no way you can find it under the skin although you might be trying to get it from the or even try to pull it out through the inguinal canal it's not possible because it's quite big so you still got to go in now the surgical technique is is to do a skin incision parallel to the penis plant dissection reflect the penis to the other side reflect it to the other side and then you do plant dissection in the subcutaneous fat to check for to look for the linear alba so you insert the linear alba and open up sufficiently to hook up the two the two uh, like spain the, the two testicles either that or if you want to you just open a much bigger incision a much longer incision to show to, to give you more exposure and uh, then you can spot the the uh, the testicle and dominant testicle easier. But uh, in this case, I did a small incision, so it will take some time to to hook up. So I need to hook. If you do a bigger incision, you probably just see it and then just pull it out. Yeah. And uh, other than that, e collar and the IV drip. So the dog should be able to wake up soon. 
September 26, 2016. Bilateral abdominal, retained testicle, photo eight months old, sold by the breeder, Mr. William Go, and also referred to by, by him to us for the neutering. So just remember that the retained uh, deciduous teeth or puppy teeth need to advise the owner to get them extracted at the same time so that the dog can really chew properly or bite properly for September 20 September 26, 2016 male poodle 8 months comes in for the ordinary neuter the owner had bought him from a breeder this is a uh, a poodle without scrotum and uh, testicles. So the dog is eight months old and the owner noticed the dog was marking, urine marking for the last two weeks and also gripping her 11 old daughter's legs. So she decided that uh, the dog must be neutered to stop this antisocial behavior. Now dogs eight months are considered mature and so they show signs of urine marking, lifting the legs to spray urine onto the walls and uh, causing smells. So the, the couple decides on this uh, neutering and was preferred by the breeder. Now, the thing is, this poodle, when they arrive here, I noticed that uh, this is not the normal poodle. Now, you see the normal poodle, usually has two testicles descended. No? This is a normal, normal poodle, but in these three, these three uh, drawings, I will show the abnormal situations. Now, in the abnormal situation, there is a descended testicle and an undescended one. That means it's inside the body, under the skin. This is called monocryptochidism. Now, there's another one where there are two undescended testicles. They might be scrotum and they may not be a scrotal sac. Now these two undescended testicles are also under the skin and can be felt by the vet. So this one is under the skin just out of the inguinal canal. So this is not a problem for any vets to operate. Now I have a com complaint from this owner that her friend sent send the dog to a vet and the vet for uh, neutering, the vet takes out the normal testicle and then take out the inside one. So I presume, I presume the one inside is not under the skin, so it cannot be palpated or it may have dropped in. So, so this is called abdominal retained testicle because inside the abdomen. Now, the, so the vet neutered this, this the normal one and told the owner that he only removed one testicle and give her a neuter certificate. Now this is very dangerous for the vet because later on when the undescended testicle inside the abdomen becomes cancerous, the owner or the practice will be sued by the owner because the dog may die from the big cancerous testicle at the age of maybe 7 to 10 years old. So for younger vets, if they find that situation where they can see one testicle and can't feel any of the undescended one, that means the dog is likely to have uh, an abdominal testicle inside the abdomen. So inside the abdomen, then either they refer the case out to some vets who may have more experience doing it because you have to open up the abdomen to get the testicle. If not, you cannot certify that the dog is neutered because it is not really neutered. It is 50% neutered. And uh, if the if the if the authorities check, or if the if the owner complains of uh, incompetence, then uh, there is a big problem for the the younger vet. So it's best not to do if you don't know how to to do it through the abdomen. Now, so this is the first abnormal situation where you have one descended testicle and one under the skin, which the vet can palpate and just remove it easily. Now the second abnormal situation is that, that, that whether there is scrotal cell or not, it doesn't matter, but 
two undescended testicles are just under the skin and it can be felt. So the vet can just make a cut here, make a cut here and remove it. Or the vet can pull it downwards towards here, towards here, make an incision here, make an incision here and uh, just, just remove the testicle here in one incision. Just remove two testicles in one incision so that you can uh, you don't have to have two holes otherwise you cut here or you can cut here as well so so there are two methods of doing it so the, 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 the method I use is just to bring it a pre scrotal incision then manipulate this testicle down to here and this testicle down like it and then remove it so this is the bilateral cryptokidism but under the skin. Now the third one, this is the one we have today in this case study of this puller. Now you can see, I can feel that there is nothing to be felt and uh, in this case now the, the owner definitely wants to neuter the dog. Now if the vet is inexperienced in abdominal surgery, just refer the case out and uh, it will be simpler for, for the peace of mind. Now in this case this one, today's case, which I have the video earlier on. Now the, the, the testicles are not, they are not under the skin or they are not even out of the inguinal canal, they are deep in. So in this case now, where is the testicle? So, so now, so there is zero, there is a zero uh, testicle, undesigned testicle under the skin. So this is number three, the situation number three, this is number two where they are under the skin, two under the skin. This is number one, where it's one under the skin and one uh, descended. So this one is, is easy. This is definitely, this is definitely a neutral cert. Uh, there's no uh, danger of the vet being sued. Okay, because he removed two. Now this neutral cert, also no problem. Number two situation, neutral certificate. No problem, you remove two. So this one, it won't get sued. Now, the third one is, the third one is, uh, actually the third one is, either both are inside the abdomen, or one is inside. If it's one is inside the abdomen, and one is, uh, let's say here, one is inside, and one is, let me see, can I see here, one is here, and the vet just removed this one, has the complaint by this owner of a relative and the vet telling the, the relative that he only removed one. Now, this case, the neutral certificate is not really uh, real neutral because the one inside is uh, not removed. So the situation will be not fully neutral and the vet may get sued for incompetence. Okay, so now I'm coming back to actually this this case of today's case where there are none none here. Now this case gotta let the owner know early because it's gonna cost more and it takes a longer time to do. Now this one the vet must have some experience with abdominal surgery, otherwise don't do it. Don't do it because it is not worth the trouble to do it because sometimes it's hard to locate the the abdominal tesker. Now where is the abdominal tesker now? I will, I will show you that uh, abdominal testicle is on the neck of the bladder or it's beside the neck of the bladder and uh, so if you see here this one is not really near the neck of the bladder this is under the skin now the bladder the bladder is around here as well yeah. okay so the bladder is around here this is the bladder and undescended testicle is actually around here. So it's further away from the neck, of, uh, from the bladder itself. So you shouldn't open here. So if you do a, if you do an incision here, it's too, too far forward. So normally you try and do an incision here, inside here, uh, parallel to the penis, and a bit further down. So you will definitely get to the neck of the bladder which is further down and uh, so you open the incision 
the skin incision. Then the, you open the skin incision, then you use the a forceps, a blunt dissection, and the usual blunt dissection, and then you use the forcep to pull the skin forward, including the penis, to this side. So you pull to this side, you have a bigger exposure. So once you pull to this side, you can see, use blunt dissection, use blunt dissection to remove the fat, remove the fat and everything, blunt dissection, then you will see the linear elbow. Now every vet should know what is a linear elbow. It's, it is a white line. The linear elbow where it reach the midline of the two muscles. You can see after you do blunt dissection. So so you see the linear elbow, then you use a scalpel, of course, to, to cut the linear elbow. Cut the linear elbow. And then once you cut the linear elbow, this is where the problem is because how are you going to see the how are you going to find the, the, the testicle now? Okay, so so the, the 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 linear alba is cut. Now now I'm showing the cut linear alba, and then you open up. Okay, you open up the linear alba, and you can see that uh, depending on how long your incision is. If it, like mine is quite short, so so I only can see basically I see the rectum. I see the rectum. The rectum is grey. I can see the rectum, although it looks very much like the like the bladder, but actually it's not. It's a bit darker grey. Now the bladder is very uh, for this young dog. It should be very transparent and very uh, thin. Definitely not not so dark. Dark. This one will be the the stools and the rectum. I saw this this rectum and this view, uh, and then. Now, although, although we, we can say that it is around the neck of the bladder, but, uh, but uh, the fact is, is, it's not so simple to see unless you make a very big incision, make a very big incision down. So you make a very big incision, of course you can see it, make a very big incision, like you do bladder surgery, eh? make a very big incision, then definitely you can see when you reflect it, when you reflect the skin, you can see the two, the two uh, descendant testicles. They are not that big, but they, they can be seen at eight months of age. You can see, it's, you can see the bladder, the neck of the bladder. So your your your, if you are not very familiar with a small incision, then you make a big incision. You will see the bladder, and once you see the bladder, then you just go to the neck of the bladder, the neck. And you will see the two, then that's easy, you just you show where you like it, like it, and then you just remove. Now in today's operation, because I, I need a small incision, so I really have to use a hook. So I use a hook to go in. This green one represents the hook. So you go to the hook and you go in, you hook up, you hook up one first. So I hook up one. Now you identify it because you can see the spermatic stom cord, the blood vessels, and the other side is the ligament. So these are all attached to the body. Yeah? So you have to, you have to, of course, make sure you like it, it one. You like it both. Huh? So that, uh, of course, to stop bleeding. So you like it, you like it both so that, uh, as usual, as what you do in castration, the three, three, uh, Three forceps method. Three three forceps. Huh? Three forceps method. You place onto it. Three. Then you 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 uh, take out the last one. Then you ligate, and then you cut. You cut in between the the first and second. You just cut it. Okay. That's how you. But this is the the usual castration, so I don't need to elaborate on this. So once you once you cut these two. Then you can remove this and then put it back in. And uh, traditionally, you just close the whole, whole thing, the linear elbow first, and then the skin. I also do a continuous subcutaneous uh, suture for the fat. So there are three rows I have done, and this dog done three rows. Uh, the third row is of course the skin. The skin I would do for me, I prefer to do the the horizontal mattress, so that. Uh, 
the horizontal mattress so that the, the dog may not be able to to lick it because the wound is across the wound here. So this is a horizontal mattress and painkillers and and uh, antibiotics. The dog must be given IV in this case. So this briefly illustrates how I did the operation. Then now we look at the anesthesia. Now the anesthesia, now this dog had, had to 40 minutes, you can see, from the first incision to the end of the last stitch. Huh? So this 40 minutes is definitely much longer than a normal castration. A normal neuter is only 10 minutes. So you can see, there's no joke for inexperienced vet to, uh, to, uh, to spend 40 minutes to, to look for the abdominal. I mean, even with an experienced vet like me, 40 years experience, it still takes time to locate it. Huh? Now the anesthetic, if you have a good anesthetic uh, assistant, you can see that she will give the minimum dose, not not all the time three percent or two and a half percent. Although if you do that, it should be okay. Two and a half percent. So after that, uh, this is for the dental, the three teeth. So this is how the operation has been done for this uh, bilateral cryptosis in the top. Okay, finish. I got myself.